it all started with a very simple idea. Tell the stories of how successful middle market CEOs made it to the corner office. I'm Brand Handley, founder and managing director of Resource Options International, or ROI. We're the USA's premier executive search firm focused exclusively on empowering middle market companies to attract, hire, and retain A players while transforming top executives' careers and lives. ROI's Into the Corner office is dedicated to discovering how middle market CEOs advance their career, and we're making these remarkable and sometimes quite unbelievable stories available to you for the very first time. Listen and learn about the challenges they've overcome, the interesting people they've met along the way, and the lessons learned that steered these executives' unique journey into a middle market corner office of their own. I know you enjoy these CEO stories as much as I've enjoyed recording them. So thank you for listening today. And if you like what you've heard, rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm looking forward to you joining me on the next great middle market CEO adventure into the corner office. Today, my guest is Peter Demos. Peter is president and CEO of Demos Restaurants, and he entered the family business at the age of 12 as a dishwasher at his dad's Western Sizzlin restaurant. From there, his experience in the food industry continued to expand as he got the opportunity to learn every possible aspect of the business. He would eventually pursue studies in law at the University of Missouri, and he returned to Demos Restaurant in 1999 with the single goal of growing the organization. Peter Demos, welcome into the corner office. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's good to have you here and uh, been so interested to have your story. Uh, we're into the double digits of C12 CEOs now, and our audience seems to continue to grow. And uh, you're joining an academy of uh, some pretty significant businessmen around the country who have uh, joined this organization for which we're both members. Uh, and we'll get to that over the course of the podcast. But we kind of like to start early in life. And Peter, maybe you can just tell me a little bit about your early years, you know, where you grew up and uh, what your early family life was like. So, uh, so yeah, I was born in Charleston, South Carolina, but I moved to the Middle Tennessee area when I was uh, just a year old. All right. So, um, and grew up in, like I said, grew up in Middle Tennessee. My my father moved up here to start a Western Sizzling franchise, and when I was 12 years old, I I started working in it and um, said I wanted to have nothing to do with the restaurant business, and <laughs> uh, went and became a lawyer, and um, All right. uh, went to law school in Kansas City, and then came back and was practicing law and realized that, you know, I, I still like the restaurant that, you know, the big thing that I wanted to do in practicing law was I wanted to do it to help people. You know, I read all these great books sure. from, you know, about Bill Kunzler and Alan Dershowitz and Clarence Darrow. And I said, you know, I wanted to be like them. And I realized that, you know, the law, the everyday practice of law is not like that. And, um, and then at the same time, I was working part-time at night um, at the restaurant and, realized I was making a more of an impact on people's lives in the restaurant than I ever <laughs> was a face. lawyer. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about the early years, because I know we're going to get into your education. Uh, tell me about your parents. Did, had dad always been in the restaurant business? Was mom and brothers well, and sisters involved as well? Yeah, so I'm fourth generation restaurant owner. My father, oh, wow. um, um, you know, my father grew up in the restaurant business as well. He started when he was uh, I think nine um, during World War II, they were they were short of uh, labor, um, and so they uh, his his father uh, needed him to work, and and so he he would work in those little a little mom and pop cafes, um, and um, yeah, so he he operated in uh, it was out of uh, Pratt City, uh, Bur- outside the Birmingham area, Pratt City, uh-huh. Alabama, right. and so right. he uh, you know, so so. So, but yeah, he he left it and went into the motion picture theater business. He managed motion yeah. picture theaters for uh, close to twenty years. Um, he was a, grew up to be a it was over uh, was promoted to be a city manager, which included the Fox Theater in Atlanta at one time. And then wow, he left it and and um, was the first executive director of Charlestown Landing in Charleston. And um, then that's when he decided to go back into the restaurant business. He actually told my my mother when he met her that he would never get married and he would never work in the restaurant business. And, um, <laughs> this seems like a family trait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, he was married. Yeah, he was married nine months after he met her, and um, and was in the restaurant business 
obviously, you know, <laughs> a couple uh, months later, probably. Well, no, it was actually about 20, <laughs> 20 something years later. Now my, my wife, right. on the other hand, uh, yeah, when she was in, when we got engaged, you know, she was, she was engaged to a lawyer and two weeks later is when I left to go into the restaurant business. So, so um, she had no idea what she's getting into. None whatsoever. <laughs> so. Now was your mom involved in the business as well? Brothers and sisters? Yeah. So, so my mother, my mother went to, um, uh, bookkeeping school and ah, she, she flunked out of it. Um, <laughs> And, um, and then one day my father, uh, came home and said his bookkeeper quit and she's going to have to be his bookkeeper. And so he just, you know, and so she had to do she it. She got enlisted. She got voluntold. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and, and you know, she grew up in a rural Georgia picking cotton, you know, wow. so for her, everything, it was just, you know, it was just very common sense way of doing it. And that's how yeah, she, yeah. that's how she did it. You know, simple, you know, bills came in, you paid it, you know, yeah. employees worked, you paid them. And, right. you know, I mean, that was, and hopefully there was money left in the till at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, you, uh, do you have brothers and sisters, Peter? I do. I have one older sister and she was involved okay. in the business for a while, but, but, but several years back, um, uh, she has retired and, uh, she was 11 years older than me and, okay. um, and. And so, so my mother, though, after she did that, she actually, uh, when they started Demas's, um, they, uh, she ran the dining room and learned how to do that the hard way because she didn't know what she was doing there either. And she created the <laughs> systems of service that is, um, that, that really put us on the map. Um, she was, she was absolutely incredible with how she operated and she, her philosophy was, is she didn't know how to run a restaurant. She knew how to raise children. So she was going right. to treat them like her kids. Oh, and, and, a, and, and that's it, a great philosophy. Yeah, yeah. And it just, it just worked, you know, they messed up, they got right. in trouble. If they did great, they got rewarded. And, <laughs> you know, and, and she meant what she said. It was just real simple again, because the country girl philosophy of how to do it. That's great. Did you grow up in a Christian home? So I, yes, um, I grew up, uh, well, I, I, yes, um, I did. Uh, my, uh, I was, I was the kid that, that, you know, was forced to go to church. Um, right, right. you know, we, we, we started out Episcopalian and then there was some problem that they had with that, that, that church. And we went to a Presbyterian church and then back ah. to Episcopalian. And, um, and so, yeah, I grew up there. I went to a, um, um, uh, a, a Christian elementary school. And then my, okay. my high school, um, although it wasn't Christian, it was a private high school, but it, it, um, you would always have to do devotions and they, they had like Bible classes and that type of stuff, but they, they never nice. classified themselves as a Christian school, but they yeah. obviously had some Christian influences into it. Did you come to Christ as a kid or did that come oh, later? No, in no, it came much later. <laughs> I, I, I uh, despised uh, church. I despised. Um, and then as I grew older um, and was hanging around people that were claiming they were Christians that went to the school, um, um, I grew to despise Christians. And mm. um, saw some uh, um, contradictions. I, that sounds uh, like. yeah, yeah. You know, but, yeah. you know, it even started even at a very young age. I, I remember. I couldn't have been more than five, six years old when I, when I held up the line as we were, you know, shaking hands with the priest as we were leaving the church to ask mm -hmm. him a question. And he gave me an answer and I didn't, didn't like his answer then. I didn't think it made sense. And the, the question right. I asked him was, was, you know, how can God be everywhere at once? And he tried to explain it to me what was, what he thought was best for a five or six year old. And mm -hmm. It was not good enough for me. It made no sense to me, and um, so so I would I would go through my 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 Christian life, questioning things yeah. sometimes legitimately, sometimes um, in, in a cynical way, and uh, but again, yeah, it, it kind of got to the point where, you know, if. if I started to end up kind of going after Christians right, and just being right. mean to them, um, yeah. making them squirm, making them embarrassed, uh, making them look stupid. Um, and I was really good at doing that. So that was kind of that, that was a big background piece of it. But but I still was going to church because my parents made me. Um, right, sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that sometimes that's the way it works. Hey, look at Saul or Paul. Right. You know, in the Bible. Uh, gosh, uh, even going so far as crucifying Christians before he came around. So we'll get to that story a little bit later. But let's talk about your student years. Uh, were you a good student in school? And, you know, what kind of things were you doing outside of class, if anything, other than working as a dishwasher? Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I played baseball and, mm -hmm. and soccer and um, um you know, I, I, I think I did a year track and, um, you know, my, my mother kept trying to make me musical, but I couldn't play a, play an instrument to save my life. Um, <laughs> and so I had to take piano lessons, tr trombone lessons, um, uh, guitar lessons and right. none of it, none of it, none of it, none of it no, not even close. <laughs> and, um, 
I mean, it was, it, it was kind of sad. I remember performing a guitar in front of uh, their friends one time, and they didn't even know that I stopped the song. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, just, it, it just tells you how bad I was. But oh, I love it. I, I um, uh, but yeah, as far as being a good student, no, um, I was a smart student. So right. if it was a subject that I enjoyed, um, I excelled in. Um, but mm, I was lazy. I didn't like homework. I was argumentative with the teachers. Um, I, I, I spoke to a group of teachers about two years ago and I told them, I said, I was the student that they all hated. Um, and, um, I, I mean, you know, if, especially if it was involved in history, um, right. cause I, I, I read so much. Yeah, I was going to say, you're probably knew more than they did. huh? <laughs> and a lot of, in a lot of situations, I think I did, you know, yeah. obviously probably not as, as well rounded, but there's probably certain subjects that I could, but I was, I was, um, you know, I, I I wasn't completely disrespectful, but I was, mm. I was very um, challenging. I'm sure you were a challenge. I was argumentative. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a nicer way of saying it. Huh? And what about entrepreneurial things? Were you involved? Did you have the ubiquitous paper route? Did you sell Christmas cards? Uh, you know, were you doing any things or, or was it literally working at dad's restaurant for the most part? Yeah, I worked, I worked there. You know, I also worked at a, I worked at another restaurant for a while that wasn't his. And I worked at a retail store, like a, it was super X drug stores, which is like a Walgreens. And, oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, they and, were probably purchased by Walgreens or CVS. One yeah. Of those two. Oh, yeah. Easily. Yeah. <laughs> one of those. Um, and, and so, you know, we so so I yeah, I worked in those. I know I did other things to to make money. I don't remember all of it. Um, and um, and now when I when I kind of hit my my college years, um, you know, I wrote papers for people and they paid ah, me for that. Right, um, right. Um, so, but, but no, other than that, no, there wasn't anything that said, oh, wow, I want to go into the, the business side of things. I didn't, um, well, I, the I, law didn't really degree, I mean, through. pursuing a law degree is no small task. So, you know, you obviously had to apply yourself there. What, what was the motivation behind uh, pursuing that? Did you, was there someone that uh, motivated you or a lawyer you met or, you know, what was the challenge? It was a- accidentally, it was my, it was my father. My, I never was allowed to miss school unless right. you had to been really sick to miss school. Yeah. Bedroom. And, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there had to been some physical sign of it. Um, my dad was an educator. It was the same way. You know, there's no way we could get away from going to school if uh, you know he was going. My, my, my parents probably did it because they didn't want me at home. No, I'm just joking. They did. But they, I did. I had wonderful parents, and they loved me so much. It is incredible. It is incredible how much they loved me. Um, so no, they they were absolutely wonderful. But um, but I, I don't know if I could have put up with me. So um, but but no, they. Uh, but one time I was able to get out of school because my. My father thought it'd be a good experience. He was a witness in a criminal case. It was a fraud oh. case. And oh. he thought it'd be a good experience for me to go and see it. So I had to wear my little blue blazer and gray ah. pants, white shirt and power red tie that was too wow. tight. And, you know, sit in this packed, crowded courtroom. And you're just How like, old were you at the oh, time, Peter? oh, I was probably 12 years old. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And, um, and, an and the guy wanted to defend himself. Oh and goodness. so he had to call every witness on the stand, including my father, including that. And I watched this whole process and I thought this process is so neat. I want to know more about it. Wow. And wow. so I started That's reading something. books from it and, yeah. and just understanding it. And then, and then it later came into, you know, I'd read transcripts. You know, I used to, when I was uh, the first years of college, I would, I would go to the courthouse and just watch court cases. Um, mm. So, so yeah, I, so, so my, so that's how I ended up getting into it. But it so was did kind you of go, accidental. You went right, right to law school out of your undergrad? Well, yeah, I, my undergrad was my undergrad was a little bit longer than than most. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, it took six years undergrad. Um, a couple of years I had to learn that girls and credit cards didn't mix. Um, <laughs> and uh, I love it. And so, um, but but you know, I also uh, I debated in high school and I debated in college for, ah, for, for okay, a while. And, yeah. and so that's, I, that's I, good I like lawyer that training. process. Right. Yeah, you know. And, um, so yeah, when I finally got out of undergrad, I, I went to law school and, um, yeah, and then did um, you practice for a bit after you got your JD? Yeah. Yeah. For a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, and I still have my, I still have my law license. You wouldn't want me in court right now. Um, <laughs> but you know, I've, but you I've, know, I've I'm sure it's helped you in business. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah. I've changed some legislation. Um, I've written, written some stuff that, that, that helped change our unemployment for laws in Tennessee are written by industry. me. 
Yeah. No, I mean, it's just all unemployment laws are written by wow. me on that. Um, yeah, I do a lot of employment law. Like I'm actually speaking to a continuing legal education legal oh. education class in November um, on you know, terminations, discharge, et cetera. You mm-hmm. know, because I have a more mm-hmm. practical aspect of it that many people don't have. Yeah. But yeah, so you have to recertify every year. Or so yeah, you have you, to have yeah. like. 12, you have to have 12 hours of those uh, continuing oh, classes yeah. and three ethics hours. And my assistant's very good at harassing me to keep me up. Keeping to you on, on schedule. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> I'm sure that's helped for business too. Awesome. So how long was it before you went back to, uh, was it was it uh, Western Sizzlin at that time or, or had dad started uh, Demos Restaurants? No, it was Western, it was, you know, he was in Western Sizzlin up until. So he, was a, he was a franchisee, right? He was, and then yeah. he, he had a partner with it and, um, in mid eighties, uh, his partner died and mm. he got a new partner who basically said over the next five years, I'm going to buy you out and get you mm. out of it. And, um, that partner is actually the guy that built O'Charlie's to be really big. His name is Dave oh, Wattel. Yeah. He mm-hmm. worked for, he worked for some big restaurant people. And, um, and then 89, my father, um, uh, and mother started Demas's and they did not want to have a partner to have to answer to. And they, he wanted to do it just way he wanted to do it. And it was just his little retirement restaurant. And that's where he, um, that's where that started was back in December of 89. And then you joined, uh, at what year? I joined then, um, you know, and I would, uh, so I was working, did he put you back in the dishwashing machine or did you? Have- uh, no, I'd already worked my, well, I'd already done other stuff. Like I've done frying drill and everything else like that. But no, my, my schedule then was I would get up with him and we would be at work around four thirty five in the morning wow, and we would, yeah. we would make sauces. And then at 11, I would go out front and cashier. Then, um, I would, uh, then, then take a little break in the afternoon. Then I got to, then I waited tables that night and then I would stop waiting tables and then I would close the restaurant and we would go back to the hotel and pass out, um, and <laughs> Gosh, start it over the next days, day. Huh? Yeah. And so, um, you know, so that's how, so, so yeah, so that was, that was how that kind of started for a while. And, um, but so no, that, that, and then when I was 19, and that was just one old, restaurant managers. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then when and I was 19, I was a manager yeah. and then, then we opened up a second one in 92. 92. And how many today? Uh, we have four Demuses and then we have two of, uh, a fast casual concept called PDK Southern Kitchen and Pantry. Great. Cool. And how many total employees? I've got around 500. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. So the first time you started managing people, it sounds like what you were just right out of uh, 1990, 1991, those first couple of years or what yeah, was that? I was, I, was ni- I was 19 years old when, right. when I was actually officially wow. a manager. Um, yeah. And so that would be the, um, so that was, that was the year that I would start. Uh, what do you remember about people? some of the things that you learned in those early years? <laughs> good and good and bad, right? Well, I, I, I had a, I had a notorious temper and, um, <laughs> uh, and it was a lot quicker when I was younger. And, um, and so I, I, the, the, one of the lessons I remember was an employee came up to me and said something and it made me mad. And I just slammed my hand down the table mm. and my father walks by and he looks at me and he says, you don't have that luxury. And, uh, that's all he had to say about it. And, yeah. um, I got, I, I was terminated twice. Once was my fault. Once was his, uh, <laughs> both times were on December the 23rd. They were just two years apart. You're um, kidding. Oh my no. gosh. Oh my um, gosh. And, um, tell us about those. What was so, the time it was your fault? <laughs> so, so the time it was my fault was, uh, I hadn't done any Christmas shopping and I didn't realize that when I came home from Christmas that I was going to be working, you know, 17 hours a day. Right. And I kept saying, I, I need to, you know, I need to do this. And he would say, yeah, you can do it tomorrow. And then every day it was another, I, it was 19 another, hours, right? yeah, another emergency right. popped up. He needed me for this. He needed me for this. And, um, and, um, I smarted off to him in front of other people Ooh. and, um, he, good lesson there. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and he said, um, well, just go. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not going to go Christmas shopping. You want me here? I'm going to stay. And he said, no, you have to go. And I said, the only way you can get me out of here is if you fire me. 
and uh, which he did. And uh, <laughs> summarily, I'm sure. <laughs> How long is it before he came back? Uh, it, it it was it was it, that that one that one was a, a much quicker much much quicker uh, fight. Yeah. The the yeah. other one, I don't know what happened with him, but we were so busy. It was a Monday night. It was December 23rd of Again. of oh, 91, gosh. and yeah. it was a Monday night, and it was either Monday night or Sunday night. But it was generally a slow shift. But we were super busy. We broke a record by eight o'clock at night and the employees we had were, were just some of the worst employees we had. And just to give you an idea, they, they spilled ice on the carpet and they grabbed a mop, mm. mop to clean it up. Ooh. And, um, yeah. and so he, he just lost it at some point in time. I don't know what happened. And so he was yelling at everybody, you got to get off the clock faster and everything. And I was the closing manager and, you know, it was one of those that, you know, you just, I knew when he was that way, you just kind of stayed away. Right. And, right. um, and so I was showing a, a, a server how to, how to scrape a pan quicker and more efficiently. And I was showing that he came over and started yelling at me, why am I doing that? And he should know better already and all this other stuff. And I just looked at him and I said, you want, I'm just trying to get him out of here faster. That's what you want, isn't it? And he walked about probably about 20 feet down that server line, turned and started screaming at me, you get out of here. You get out of here now. Mm. And um, um, uh, he I, had I tried to be in his bonnet that day. It sounds oh, like. yeah. <laughs> and then, and so and I was like, I wasn't coming back for Christmas. I mean, I was mad. I was yeah. furious. Yeah. And um, I got my car and they they my mother reached a friend of mine where I went to and, and she convinced me to come back. And when I got back, he was bawling, crying. He was so upset. Mm. And, um, you asked for my forgiveness, which of course I naturally did. And, yeah. and, um, and there was something I, obviously going on together. That, that doesn't sound like his natural tendency. No, yeah. well, no, he, yeah. yeah, he always had it. He always had a temper. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, I mean, so that's where was, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, and it was better than his father, which was better than his father. I love the, some of the stories. <laughs> it um, in generations. Yes, so. it does. Um, uh, but, but, you know, uh, Greeks are emotional people and you right. know, we, we, uh, express it in all various ways, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so he was, uh, um, but yeah, he was, you know, it was just something about that day. He's always, when he would get angry, he was always right. And and it was very rare that he was wrong when he got angry. And that was one of the few times that he was wrong when he was angry. And I don't like, I don't know what caused it. Yeah. It was extremely rare that I've ever seen it. Um, and, um, but he knew it. And oh, he, he knew it. Yeah. Well, he knew it too. I think my mother helped contribute with him learning it. Just as <laughs> my wife is, and I'm uh, sure everybody else who's listening out there too has probably had a spouse that has oh, let yeah. them know a couple oh, times yeah. where they have <laughs> more than once <laughs> overstepped their boundaries. So, <laughs> yeah, a great story. Well, you know, we were talking about the Apostle Paul a little earlier on. Tell us about your road to Damascus story. So, you know, you went from criticizing Christians and calling them out to uh, obviously being a believer today. Tell us a little bit about that process and how that happened. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I never actually went so far to say that I was an atheist, but I, but I was probably mm-hmm. worse than that. Um, uh, because I, I, I just, um, and, uh, I was, I was, I was not kind, at least I was not kind to Christians at all. And, um, uh, eventually I just kind of settled as, uh, you know, I settled into a, a uh, a nice safe place, which is, you know, God's an absentee landlord. You know, yeah, he's agnostic. up there. Mm-hmm. I'm down here. I got to pay rent every now and then. And you just ask when your pipe bursts, you ask for help. And, yeah. and, you stopped, uh, did you I, stop going to church? Did oh, that yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, you know, I would try, I would try and I got, I got asked to leave from a couple of churches. I was thrown out of a Bible study. Um, and, and, and in each of those situations, I wasn't trying to be antagonistic too, which is really funny. Um, I, I could see by my nature that how it would come across. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but in each of those situations, I literally went with the intent to learn. Um, so that, so I was just kind of like, look, we're just going to be separate. You know, I'll just kind of be a nice person and everything will be fine. And I married a woman who, um, uh, had seven Southern Baptist preachers in her family. And, <laughs> Including um, probably your father, right? Uh, no, PK. actually he wasn't, no? but he was a strong believer. And, yeah. and, um, you know, we just, we just kind of settled on just not just agreeing to disagree. And then mm. we had kids and I realized my responsibility as a father was take them to church and they hated it. And I was like, well, that's what church is supposed to be. You're supposed to hate church. And, um, <laughs> that's the way you were raised. So yeah, they had to be raised yeah, that way too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and, 
And my, yeah, we ended up going, we ended up going, my wife ended up finding this church and she would go more frequently than me. I would always use work as an excuse. And, you know, Sundays is our busiest day, you know, so, um, and, um, yeah, so we would, we finally, um, after a while and, um, there was a, there was a man that came, um, his name is Angus Buck and he is a South African Mm. evangelist, uh, movie faith like potatoes, um, about his life. And he was coming to, to, uh, through our church, uh, to Murfreesboro and, um, he, um, you know, and she wanted me to go to this men's event that he was mm-hmm. doing and I refused to go. <laughs> and, um, then she said, well, he's preaching her church. We're going to it. And I try to fight her on it. And, uh, long story short, and I actually have detailed this story out in my book, uh, afraid to trust. And um, thank you for sending the book, by the way, it literally just caught up with me. I know we spoke a couple of weeks ago. I haven't had the chance to read it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's so, but anyway, it's, it's so like, there's all these weird little details, you know, it's, 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 you know, uh, non-Christian would say it's coincidences, but you could see God moving right. like in so many different right. ways. It's really cool when you can kind of look back at the bigger picture and ultimately by me trying to con her into not going to church, I ended up having to be there at eight 30 in the morning and where he wasn't preaching. We got in a fight on the way out. We got in a fight when I said, we're going to go back to hear him. Um, you know, and she was like, you're not going to be a martyr. And we got in this huge fight about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, and through again, another series of comical, comical events that took place, I ended up in, or my family ended up sitting around a group of people that travel all over the world just to pray for Angus on their own dime. Wow. And, wow. um, and, uh, one of them is still a dear friend of mine. Uh, he's, he's, he's one of my favorite people. Um, and, um, but, uh, Angus did an altar call and, and I went up and mm. as opposed to being good and joyful, that was, uh, that was not a good experience for me. Um, because mm. it was the first time that I felt compelled to do something that I didn't understand. Right, and, right. um, huh. you know, it wasn't but like I was forced to do to. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, wasn't forced yeah. to, it wasn't like a zombie walking up. I was, huh. I, I just, I was so overwhelmed with doing it. And then when I got up there, I was like, yeah, after it was over with, I didn't understand it. Hmm. And so then how old were you at the time? Oh, 41, uh-huh. um, maybe 42. It was, I think it was right mm-hmm. before my 41st birthday, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and so, I, and again, through another series of, 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 of errors that took place, uh, <laughs> which really ended up being successes, it started a week before I even got put in front of him in a meet and greet the following day. Oh, wow. and, and he asked the question, he said, if you're willing to die for your country, why are you afraid to speak out for God? And nobody's <laughs> ever said I was afraid of anything. Wow. Um, and and so I was like, I was like, okay, you know, and, and it struck me and I had to drive to Memphis for a board meeting for the, mm-hmm. for the Tennessee Hospitality Association. And I was past president of it. And so I still had to go, but I didn't have to, I, my, my role was very limited because I was past president. So I spent right. the majority of the time in my hotel room and over the next three days, I slept for four hours. Oh my gosh. And, um, just wrestling, trying to figure out what, what boxes do I need to check to figure out how to be a Christian? You were Jacob. You were Jacob wrestling with God. Oh yeah. Oh, it was (laughs) awful. I was tired. I was exhausted. And and finally the day I was supposed to leave and I had to drive all the way back. And, and I finally said what I, what I, what I said was my first real prayer I ever said, which is God, you win. I'm turning everything Mm. over to you. And immediately I felt everything come out, every fear and security. You know, you don't realize how much fear that you have until it's gone. Until you give it up. Yeah, that's so true. And and then and all of a sudden it was just so liberating and freeing and you know, so, you know, I I got baptized after, but then it was the matter of what does that look like? How does how do you turn (laughs) everything over to God who I just met? You know, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even two weeks into this relationship yeah. and you want me to give you everything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, there's a practical aspect to it. You know, Christian speak is Christian speak, I think, is one of the worst things that Christians do for each other. Mm. You know, when they say, well, just, you know, cast your anxieties onto him. Well, how do you do that? You <laughs> yeah, know, right. I can give you a pen. And I can hand it to you. I can see the pen literally t- land into your physical hand. But how do I take an anxiety that I can't 
touch, feel, taste right. anything, and give that to somebody who I can't see. See, you know, yeah. Yeah. and right. and I and, and so when we, when you say turn the business over, for example, you know that. You, you, there's a practical aspect to it, and and that's and that's the part of the reason why I wrote that 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 book yeah. was to kind of kind of tell the story in such a way so that people could grasp and understand that there's there's more to the, the when you the more to just saying it and then just showing up on Sunday, put your Bible up at the dashboard of your truck, right. and then pull it back out Sunday morning when you go back in. You know, right. there's a lot yeah. more to how you conduct it and what happens from there, and and um and God's so faithful in the details. It just it, it's just incredible to see. How how, how he has worked. It hasn't been easier. How it has not been easier, but it has been incredible to watch his <laughs> A lot less life. stressful, I'm sure, right? So uh, there's a security to it. There's actually, like yeah. so there's been more, but, there's, but you're secure. And like yeah. my wife and I, we have actually had a marriage counselor. We, we, we got, got told us that, that we needed to get a divorce. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and God saved our marriage as well. And, mm. and um, uh, it's funny because we actually kind of fight and fuss more now than what we did. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a security when we do it. It's yeah. not, you know, we just we just know we're fussing and fighting, but but we know that our marriage is there to honor God and we have we to respond in a way yeah. to to that that's God honoring, um, even if we don't that's like awesome. it. Yeah. yeah, that's great. <laughs> now uh, the restaurant, uh do 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 you you know, spouses, you're a faith based company. Do people know? You know, at C twelve oh, yeah. we've got to get well, the they, full realm of Yeah, well if folks. they don't if they don't know, then you're not doing your job as a Christian. I mean, <laughs> okay, you, right, Jesus right. tells us that we have to go and tell. You know, Paul right. tells us that that that, that you know ha, ha, that, that we have to be ambassadors. Can you imagine the, an, an ambassador of another country not talking about what That's the US right. wanted? That's I right. mean, you know, yeah. and just well, just let you figure it out by watching me. That's ridiculous. It, you have to use your words in order to make yeah. it. You know, faith comes by hearing, you know, and so there's there's all this stuff that says go and tell. So no, absolutely. So we first thing we did was we changed our purpose statement to glorify God by serving others. Mm. And it's on every it's on every um Manual. It's on signs on every room that we have inside the restaurant. Um, you know, we have chaplains now. We have prayer boards that That's are up. Right. Some of this, some of this, I initiated. Some of it, just other people saw my boldness and went forth with it. Um, you know, we uh, we have little New Gideon, uh, uh, the pocket testaments, um, uh, the the New Testament, uh, the sure. Gideon Bibles, and mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. we have those in the lobby for people to take. Um, you know, uh, that's free, you know, it's not free to us, but it's free to them. You know, we, right, we play right. about a third of our music is Christian music. And, um, mm. you know, we, and then, you know, we have things like we set ministry goals and like our, this year, our ministry goal was we had a lot of employees that, that can't afford a car and they're walking, you know, they're walking mm. an hour to and from work. And, um, and so we, we, we have a bike ministry and so we would give them a bike, but, but you know, we give them the bike, but we would, we would lay hands on the bike and, and, and pray yeah. over it before oh, we give awesome. it to them. And, right. you know, so those are, those are the type of stuff that we do. We, we open meetings with prayers. We have devotions. We have Bible study. We have three Bible studies that are, that are being conducted in the stores right now. That's um, awesome. and you know, well, so I know that, you're, I know you're expanding. Doing. You've certainly added a lot of restaurants since dad got things started, but what are some other kind of real milestones that you can point to for example? Example, you know, the restaurant industry is known as I recruit in it, as you know, uh, huge turnover rates, particularly at the hourly <laughs> level. Would you say that you have retention levels that have improved because of that? Or well, yeah, I'll just I'll give, you, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll give you the, the the best one for you to, to do. Back in 2012, we did a we did a uh, survey. Um, and the, the survey, our employees, this is an employee, that, employee survey. yes, yeah, okay. yeah. And our employees said that we, we, uh, when the, the results came back, the, the employees ranked us as having a toxic work environment. Oh my um, goodness. In, in wow. 2017, we were voted the ninth, uh, best large employer in Tennessee by our employees from the Tennessean. And, uh, this last year we, we moved up to fifth place. Wow. Of all the large Fantastic. employers on it, wow. so um, you know, and congratulations, um, and yeah, and our turnover rate has gotten better. It's better than the right. industry average, right? Right, but I it's still that. it's still not great because r- r- keep in mind, many of the employees we have are homeless. They're, they're some yeah. of them are drug addicts, some of them are alcoholics. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times they're there because it's their first job, yeah. or they've made some really bad decisions in their life. Right. And, um, and, and, and so some of them, you know, our turnover is because they're gone within a week, 
Yeah, you know, they show right, up two days right. of training and then they're gone. And, and you know, we, we, we struggle with that yeah. part of it. Uh, the majority, if we can keep people three months, our turnover rate is significantly better. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but it's usually that first few months and, um, you know, the labor market in Tennessee, you know, you're looking at two and a half to 3% yeah, employment. 3%, yeah. So it's, well, it's that way everywhere. Yeah. I mean, tough. you just can't. Yeah. And, and so, and, and, Bad places that are working are overpaying just to keep people. And mm. so so from somebody that, that's desperate for, for money and they're like, hey, I can get 25 cents more an hour, they're leaving. They'll go do it. You yeah. know, and yeah. we can't afford. Only to discover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can't afford. We can't afford to go up on everybody's rate of pay like that. I'd love yeah. to be able to do it. One of my one of my things that's on my prayer board right now is our, um, you know, we have so many homeless employees and I don't have a number. I'm guessing, um, I'm guessing it's about 25%, maybe 30% wow. of our employees are homeless. Wow. Um, because Nash, the growth of Nashville has, has wiped out affordable housing. Yeah. And, um, and so we, we, we're struggling with that. And, mm. you know, I would love to be able to do something with it. I don't know what it is. I just keep praying, praying for, 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 for some guidance on that. And, right, and right. nothing has come uh, to yeah. me as of yet. Um, but okay. we'll you know, check those back in with you in a year or two. <laughs> I'd love to hear about that. Well, listen, I, we're, we're getting close to our time here, but there's a few other questions. Tell us a little bit about how your leadership style, you know, has really evolved over time, Peter, you know, from the days that you were, you know, perhaps a little more angry than you uh, wished you were to, you know, kind of how you manage and lead today. <laughs> well, I can't remember the last time I threw something at somebody. <laughs> uh, That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, you know, what's funny is, is even when I was, well, even when I was bad, Peter, uh, my turnover rate was really <laughs> low, um, because people at least saw my heart. Yeah, um, but, right. but my leadership like has, has changed quite a bit. And, mm. you know, like I said, we, I, I, I do more job explaining. It doesn't mean I still don't get angry. I get angry. You know, I don't cuss anymore. Um, right. You know, that was instantaneous change. Um, I, you know, I was so creative at cussing. I, I put cuss words in the middle of words. <laughs> and, 